Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 16.4 developer beta four. This is available to developers. iOS 16.4 public beta four will usually be out by the time of this video or the following day. Now this came in at 600.2 megabytes. That's on the iPhone 14 pro max and was about 550 to 600 megabytes on all the devices you see here. Along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 16.4 beta four, Mac OS 13.3 beta four, watch OS 9.4 beta 4 along with TV OS 16.4 beta 4 and HomePod OS 16.4 beta 4 yesterday. Those two TV and HomePod OS's came out yesterday. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. We'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 20E5239B. We're getting closer to a release candidate and final release. We'll talk more about when to expect that a little bit later, but this build does have a modem update. Every single build of iOS 16.4, as far as the betas go, has had a modem update so far, hopefully continuing to improve overall connectivity, but we'll have to wait and see. However, the first change here is with software updates and so far Apple actually has not implemented the new way to software update if you're a developer. So if we go into software update and then you go to beta updates, we have the option to change out your Apple ID or change it to a developer account that's different. I've shown you that before. So far this does not seem to be needed. You can still install this with a beta profile. So maybe Apple's just trying to fix some things and they'll update this eventually. Now, other than software updates, Apple also removes the beta profile after you install it, even if you had that beta profile installed. So if you go into settings and then you go to general, go down to VPN and device management, the profile will be gone. However, you can add it back if you're a developer. So I tried this out, you can add it back, but I'm thinking this is because Apple wants real developers to use this instead of just people downloading profiles. So you can add it back, but it will automatically remove it after installing this update. Now within the about page and then coverage, they've again updated these glyphs. Before these were actual glyphs, now they're actual photos of the devices. You can see here with the AirPods Pro 2, it's still showing the glyph, but now they're actually updating with pictures of actual devices from AirPods Pro to AirPods Max to different Apple Watches and the iPhone itself. So I'm seeing that updated with Beta 4 and it looks a little bit different for me. Now if we go into the Books app, there's a new splash screen here. They continue to update this. And of course I showed you that they have the new page turned back, but it says, welcome to Apple books, find great books and audiobooks You can read or listen to anywhere on all your Apple devices, tap, get started. And then you're into a book. It's what you would expect here. Go into your menu. Of course, nothing here has really changed. You still have the option for page curls, slide or none, which everyone seems to be quite pleased about as far as Apple listening and bringing things back that people have really wanted. So it's great to see that just giving you more information about that. Now, if we go into the home app within home, and if you go into your update settings, you now not only see the beta update for home pod, but you also have a new option for home upgrade available. Now we've had this for a while. If you're on 16.4, however, within this code, this time, if you update this and then try to share your home with someone else, so they can actually use some of your devices. If they have a mixed matched home architecture update, it will actually reject that and tell you they need to upgrade first. So that's something that's within the code that will make a difference if you're not upgraded already. Also, if we go into the music app, Apple talked about bringing Apple music classical and under the browse tab, you can see discover Apple music classical. So they're pushing this and this isn't necessarily on the beta, but it showed up recently and it's on other phones as well, not running the beta, but it's saying coming March 28th, you can see the app here and pre-order it, which it's free if you have Apple music anywhere anyway, or $5 if you don't per month. So that's something that's coming soon. It's just being pushed within the Apple music app here. So it just gives more information about it. Now, something yesterday I wanted to mention is Apple released a new wallpaper in celebration of a new store opening in South Korea. If we go to download, you can get it here. I'll link it in the description, but you can see this wallpaper here and install that on your phone if you want to use that. They also released the yellow iPhone yesterday. I did a video about that. Just wanted to share that. I'm still not really sold on this. I wish it was a little more vibrant than more pastel, but we'll have to wait and see if it grows on me. 
Apple also updated something in the app store. If we go back here, they updated the clips app. So this is something that you may or may not use, but clips has been updated. So it fixes an issue in which projects cannot be accessed when using a managed Apple ID with iCloud. And it also includes general stability and performance improvements. So that's something they've actually updated just today as well. Now within the code, there's more changes as well. And those are things, of course, you can't see. We're waiting for Apple Pay savings accounts and then also Apple Pay or Apple Wallet in different countries such as South Korea, but also within apps such as Shazam, there's actually updates as well. So if we go into Shazam, there's wording changes and where is it here? Here it is. There's wording changes throughout here as Apple continues to refine this. There's also a lot of wording changes when you're setting up an iPhone now. So they've just refined what it says overall. It's not really anything different, but they will actually have different wording on it just to clarify what you're actually setting up and how you're sharing your data. Additionally, if we go into the TV app, there's some new shows starting today, Ted Lasso and other things. And they're also really pushing the season pass of MLS for soccer. So this is something that they're pushing, giving more information about. You may actually see a splash screen for it or more information, but they're now pushing that. And as far as beta four, we're seeing more and more refinements. Now, remember iOS 16.4 actually receives a bunch of different updates from new emojis, always on display settings, 5g standalone, new widgets for Apple wallet, a lot of different shortcuts updates, as well as music updates, podcast updates, web push notifications, and the other things I shared today. So lots of things are being updated in this. And as we get closer to a final release of iOS 16.4, we're going to see more and more refinements and less and less changes. So that's something we're seeing with beta four. Now, as far as storage, I have seen some people mention that. So if we go into our settings, storage finished loading, and as you can see, I'm using 124.4 gigabytes of 256 gigabytes used. Most of that is actually different apps and media. And you'll see, actually, if we go down to the bottom, my system data has actually decreased by quite a bit. Now, Apple uses this as cached information, but it seems to really have been decreased with this particular update. Hopefully you're seeing the same. Let me know in the comments below. Now, I do want to mention quite a few things Apple has fixed this time around with beta four. One of them has to do with notifications. Now, I don't really have any right now, but as far as them being squared off, I'm not seeing that as soon as I pull them down, I thought maybe at the very top, they were slightly squared, but they've fixed the speed of that. So they look proper by the time you're pulling them down. I'm not sure I'm actually seeing them squared off though. It's such a quick transition that it's hard to even catch. Also, you may notice already that the glyphs inside the battery widget, the small battery widget are now working this time around where they weren't working before. So you've got your headphones here, a car, if you're monitoring the battery in that it's actually showing the proper information here as far as what's being monitored. So that's a great thing. And then also when using FaceTime, they fix this as well. So if we go into FaceTime on the left, I have beta three on the right, I have beta four. And as you can see, the icons for both video effects and mic modes are better. Back. So we have the camera and the microphone back. They were gone with previous betas. Now it's actually been fixed and has returned. Also good news is I haven't had anything return as far as the swipe home lag, like we had in earlier betas and with iOS 16.3.1. So if I play a song swipe home, it goes to the dynamic Island, nice and smooth. I haven't had that slow down again where I had it slow down before. So hopefully that's fully resolved. It seems to be much better this time around. And also it seems to be nice nice and smooth, just scrolling through different things. I did have some issues with beta three with sort of the private relay issues or just loading things within Safari in general, that seems to be resolved this time around. But again, sometimes those things can return after a few days, but so far so good. As far as the notes, let's go into the feedback app see if we can refresh here. And now we have the iOS notes. Now there are 12 different resolved issues and 13 different known issues. As far as resolved issues, that's one more than last time and two more known issues than last time. So there's still some issues going on with this update. You'll see the new features here for home. And then also if we scroll through, you've got known issues for iCloud drive. A lot of this is related to development though. So you may or may not see this. So we'll continue down here. And you'll see here pass keys and authentication services, and then some resolved issues here with autofill and more lots of different issues. I'll link these notes in the description. Like I normally do, if you want to read through them all, but again, different things with Swift UI and more, but there's definitely some bugs still remaining with syncing different accounts and things, but known issues are mostly gone. 
One thing I did want to verify is still there. If we go back into settings, if you go to your name at the top and settings, go to iCloud and then go to advanced data protection. One thing that's a bit disappointing is it seems the icons have reverted back to what we have with iOS 16. They're now flat again for messages and as well as voice memos. So we don't have the updated icons that many of us were getting excited about for iOS 17, like we do with Mac, where we thought they would match all of them. So unfortunately that's not here and it looks like they may not be changing icons after all, but for one reason or, or another, they've actually chosen to go back to the flat icons. I would like to see them bring back some more texture and detail like we had with some of the skeuomorphic design, but something a little bit more modern as far as that goes. Now, as far as overall performance, like I said, it's nice and smooth, no issues here whatsoever. Just scrolling through, whether that just be ProMotion in general, swiping up and down seems to be nice and fast. And as far as overall heat, it's nice and cool. In fact, all of the betas have been nice and cool. I know some people are concerned as it's getting warmer outside for the summer. It seems to stay nice and cool. Now that's without a case. If you have a case on that can be actually holding in heat and keeping it a little bit warm. Nothing to really worry about as Apple manages it, but just wanted to mention that. And as far as the battery life, well, today it's actually been pretty terrible. I'm already down to 51%. So let's go back to our battery. And if we scroll down to battery, go to battery health and charging, I'm at 98%. You can see the different cycle count here that I've been sharing all along. And then also if we go to the last 10 days, well, today I've only used three hours and 14 minutes of screen active time, eight hours and 27 minutes of screen idle time. And I've used 50% of my battery or so, or 49%. Yesterday, I only had three hours and 34 minutes of screen active time and 11 hours and 23 minutes of idle time and used over 75%, probably 80% of my battery. I've had really poor battery life right now. And I'm again, not sure what's causing it, but it hasn't gotten better for me. Some people say that it has for me, it actually hasn't. It's hopefully going to improve. It is a beta, so I don't pay too much attention to it, but so far it hasn't been great for me. Now, as far as iOS 16.4's RC release or release candidate, I would expect that as soon as early next week. We're already on a build ending with the letter B. Sometimes it'll be ending in the letter A, but I think we're getting close to a final version. We could have a beta five next week, iOS 16.4 beta five, but I think we'll see iOS 16.4 RC, then a public release, maybe either the following week or they could push it to April, but I think it's probably going to be around Monday, the 27th. If I had to guess properly, Apple hasn't said publicly yet, but that seems most likely iOS 16.5 has been found in different analytics by different websites, such as Mac rumors. And also we still haven't seen anything about iOS 16.3.2 yet. So iOS 16.3.2 is not being found in any analytics anywhere. So right now it looks like Apple's just working on 16.4. And then of course, they're probably really working on iOS 17 that we should see in the first week of June. So with WWDC, we can also expect WWDC 2023 invites any day now. Could be today, could be tomorrow, could be early next week, but we should expect those very, very soon soon. Now, as far as benchmarks, for those of you following along, I did run them in Geekbench 6. So if we go into Geekbench 6, it came out at 2,502 for single core, 6,096 for, for multi-core. That's actually a little bit less than last time. So if we go into photos, I took some screenshots of it and you can see with beta three, we had 2,509 for single core compared to 2,502. And then for multi-core, 6,240 compared to 6,096. It's not too far off that I would really be concerned with that. But if I find anything more, as far as new features and changes, I'll be sure to let you know in a follow-up video later. And of course we'll have that follow-up this weekend where we talk about news as well as the overall changes and much more that's been found in here with the experience. Let me know your experience with it so far in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it will be linked in the description as it always is. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>